Assalamu alaikum, you're watching Views and News and I'm Faisal Rahman live from our Islamabad studios. Today we'll be talking about uh, Pakistan's counter-terrorism efforts. As we all know, United Nations has also hailed as far as the efforts by Pakistan are concerned and they've said that Pakistan has done a lot and the world community should also learn from Pakistan, rather help Pakistan in this regard also. As we all know that there was a very tragic um, incident on Friday uh, in a mosque in Peshawar where 60 three precious lives were lost and around 195 people were also injured. Now this has happened after a very long time but as we all know that these soft targets they have always been uh, in the sight of these terrorists, these miscreants but unfortunately whatever happened we all condemn that but I hope and pray this shouldn't be repeated. But as we know again that uh, ISIS or Daesh whatever you may name them they are in our neighborhood, not only in our neighborhood, also in certain areas uh, in uh, Pakistan from where uh, there are hideouts and they have been operating and unfortunately uh, people are suffering. Now what needs to be done? How to counter these? Earlier these were the stories from the Middle East where we used to hear about this element of Daesh. Uh, earlier these were called the rebels, again supported by the uh, West in particular by the Americans and later on whatever happened we all know. Now unfortunately the reality is that these people were brought in from the Middle East in Afghanistan and this is not uh, me who is saying that. The former president of Afghanistan, not talking about Ashraf Ghani, I am talking about uh, the one who was serving before that, Mr. Hamid Karzai. He in fact used to talk about the mystery helicopters bringing in these people from the Middle East in Afghanistan. Those C-130s dropping huge uh, amount of uh, weapons uh, but they would say, oh, oh, we dropped it in the wrong area and unfortunately they ended up with the Daesh. Another very important factor and that is about the military assets, the weapons that were left behind by the Americans and according to certain estimates the value of those that is around 85 billion dollars just imagine 85 billion dollars and they are not only with the Taliban they are with so many other factions if you remember that there was this attack about two to three weeks ago on one of the checkpoints in Balochistan on the Pakistan army and they used these sniper rifles these were the made in USA sniper rifles the night vision goggles, you name it and these miscreants, they have it. Now who has given them, who is supporting them, who is financing them, who is training them, who is assigning them these uh, various jobs, let me call that a job for them, where they are targeting the innocent Pakistanis. Just to create this turmoil, this problem in Pakistan, rather in the region. We always used to say that Afghanistan is one place where we need to bring in stability and harmony because if there is no stability in that particular country, Pakistan is going to get affected and yes, Pakistan is getting affected. This is what India wants, this is what USA wants, this is what the West wants. Now we'll be talking about that but before I introduce you to our panelists, our production team has prepared a report. Let's watch that first. World states and organizations have witnessed Pakistan's fight against terrorism and the respective monetary and life's losses which the nation has bared are also not hidden from the world. Pakistan has always faced external, direct and overt threats because of its challenging geopolitical position as every minute dynamicity in the regional and global political landscape directly impacts Pakistan the most in terms of its internal security and stability. The recent suicide attack on Peshawar Mosque during Friday prayers which resulted in death of at least 62 people and injured dozens more was an other terrorist attack on Pakistan. The United Nations Security Council protested this terrorist attack and showed the solidarity with Pakistan by declaring every terrorist attack as criminal and unjustifiable regardless of their motivation and urged all United Nations member states to cooperate with Pakistan in catching those responsible for the latest attack. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres was among the first to condemn the attack, noting in a tweet that houses of worship should be heavens, not targets. Pakistan's resolve to eradicate terrorism has always remained very high and such terrorist attacks against Pakistan cannot subdue Pakistan's spirit to fight this malaise. Now to talk about this, we have with us in our studio 
on my right is Air Commodore retired Basit Raza Abbasi Saab, who is a senior analyst. So thank you very much mm -hmm. for your uh, time and your presence. And we also have with us Ms. Naila uh, Chohan Saiber. She's a former ambassador, senior diplomat. Ma'am, pleasure to have you on the show. And on Skype, we have with us Dr. Hamid Khan Saab, who's a senior analyst. Khan Saab, pleasure to have you on the show, sir. Thank you so much uh, for your time as well. But let me put the first question to you, Air Commodore Saab. You heard. Uh, uh, the introduction and then you heard what uh, was said in the report also. So this, this terrorism, uh, this war on terrorism is a phenomena which is hardly 22, 23 years old sir. But sir if you look at the whole world, put them on one side and put Pakistan on the other, I think we have suffered more than the entire globe sir. I mean this number will keep on increasing sir if appropriate measures are not taking. Somebody says 70,000, somebody says um, 80,000 and this will keep on increasing if these miscreants, these terrorists are not eliminated. Now sir on one hand we hear that the Americans really want to bring in peace in Afghanistan. So as, as they say we will liberate them. Is this liberation sir? <coughs> have they liberated Iraq? or Syria for that matter. So wherever they have gone, they have destroyed the country for their own personal, personal motives and objectives. And having said that, now Pakistan is no more a blue-eyed boy. It's not the regime of Musharraf anymore, sir, where one man was uh, assigned certain duties and he would agree upon anything and everything, I would say. For how long, sir? And how to counter this now? Enough is enough, don't you think, sir? That's right. Uh, Faisal, if you analyze uh, terrorism, uh, I think the ideal breeding ground for terrorism is uh, ethnic and uh, sectarian uh, divides. This is the ideal breeding ground and, uh, and the environment in which they uh, flourish uh, is poverty and lack of education. So when all these elements, wherever they are uh, prevalent, you will see this menace creeping into it. From wherever uh, they, they, they find a way to reach it. And unfortunately, that's the case with our country. And our neighborhood is Afghanistan, uh, where uh, now we have a regime which we thought is a panacea for all evils. But it seems that still these hostile elements, some of them are emanating from there. It's very un unfortunate. I wish it was not so. Because we have sacrificed so much to bring peace to Afghanistan. Because we always thought that whatever happened in Afghanistan, its ripples come to uh, Pakistan. Absolutely. And if there's peace in Afghanistan, there'll be peace in Pakistan. But unfortunately, that vision and that dream has so far not materialized. Mm. I hope it does soon. And it's soon enough before we lose, lose so many of precious lives. Each one of this life is precious. Those 62 people who, who gave their lives, they were innocent Pakistanis. They must have done, they, they, they could have done so much for the well-being and welfare of this country. But they have, unfortunately, they are no more with us. So, and our soldiers, every day we hear that they lay down their lives in trying to prevent these guys from uh, uh, um, sort of uh, fulfilling their evil Two objectives. Two policemen were also martyred. Exactly. And very brutally, they were point blank shot because they were guarding. And uh, these guys, I mean, they're, they're people going for prayers. So the, 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 the policeman probably was not that active. He thought that another guy is entering into play, uh, for prayers. But this, he brought out a pistol and shot them at point blank. And that's how he entered into that prayer hall. And he reached up to the, uh, the, the, the uh, place from where the prayer, prayer is led. And there he detonated himself. Look at his resolve and look at his training and his, his sort of confidence in being able to achieve his objectives. So these are the very, very sort of... Uh, unfortunate uh, developments and I hope there's uh, a strong government in Afghanistan and here I would also like to uh, highlight the duplicity of the Western powers who were there for 20 years they were sitting in Afghanistan and for one pretext or the other they were they were the kings they could do anything they wanted and they did whatever they wanted to and one day they merrily walked out and not only walked out but they were actually shunted out from there and the way they left that place that leaves uh, much a lot to be desired. Oh yes, and yes. this is the spillover of that. Because if they had, they should have. If you have been to a place at a place for twenty years with the might of all your uh, co colleagues, and you are not able to sort of 
uh, implement or install a system which you have been professing uh, is the successful is a there was no for all will peoples? basically to exactly. implement the system sir and the will was there just to block china and put an eye on russians exactly so and, 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 to, and to keep an eye on <laughs> pakistan also so faisal i think this is all a result of all this unfortunately we are the sufferers and i'm happy that for once uh, security council has taken not notice of it although let me also say that this uh, this uh, this whatever is the resolution or whatever it is it is not that binding this it has not that sort of force which a security council meeting uh, if it meets and makes a declaration that ha that has lot of force of implementation mm -hmm. but such resolutions they don't have that force of implementation because it says very clearly that it urges all states to assist pakistan in countering this uh, terrorism's menace but that is just mere rhetoric rhetoric words what are the concrete means who are the financiers of these terrorists and i think they will find uh, somebody sitting in our neighborhood our big 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 neighbor uh, this is a lot, lot of money flows from there and you know unless these characters who are hiding in the shadows who are uh, behind operating from behind the curtain they are uh, identified and uh, sort of uh, 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 made accountable for their crimes uh, i mean pakistan has been uh, also been facing straight terrorism from our neighbors and uh, the security council should take notice of it but unfortunately the world powers when their interest is there they uh, look the other way as they did in kashmir and uh, that's why this terrorism flourishing uh, in one shape or the other and pakistan is the worst sufferer of it i totally agree with you on that sir now now uh, as there is a very interesting in english saying that where there's a will there's a way ma'am if there was a will in 2001 post 9/11 The Americans were here to eliminate Al Qaeda, a terrorist organization. In particular, Osama bin Laden. Osama bin Laden was eliminated, according to them, in 2011, March. Uh, sorry, May the second, right? No. After 10 years, they left. Ma'am, there is Daesh now there. There are so many other non-state actors operating, and non-state actors will only operate once the dollars are pouring in. Now, Indians are there. Yes, we do know. but ma'am the major role is basically of united states of america whether you talk about the middle east or you talk about this particular region is it just because that pakistan has deviated its foreign policy slightly towards the east now is that the reason we are paying this kind of a price or perhaps now the americans have found another ally in the form of india right uh, on a on a border and now these two uh, have common objectives they have got uh, uh, so many areas where they can converge and they have and perhaps that is the reason now that pakistan has become the target from both the sides ma'am that's a, i i wouldn't say this in this particular development that has taken place in peshawar if we look at it in its right context then we would have more clarity I was deeply touched by the statement made by the State Department, which uh, uh, said that the people of United States stand with the government, uh, with the people of Pakistan in their mourning. And that was a very touching statement. And it's for the first time that UN Security Council actually made a statement on this. Terrorist attacks have been taking place before also, but no such statements at the UN Security Council were made as was done. Uh, in this case we must appreciate that and we must also recognize that you are doing some things right that the international community is now understanding your problems we also have to put our own house in order of course by uh, you know uh, basit saab talked about you know the resolution it's calling on all countries to do their best in helping pakistan and i think it's a very positive statement because earlier on you and i were just talking and we we're talking about the funding sources mm -hmm. so it would be the responsibility of all those countries that keep on you know adding fuel to the fire to stop doing so because this fire will not stop 
Daesh is not going to stop here. They have a different agenda. So they are going to move forward. But I would also say that, I don't know, I, this is a good time to talk about it, that in Pakistan, um, in the you know, last two, three years, they brought together all the ulamas from different fiqh to make a joint statement, a narrative against terrorism. Because earlier on, that did not exist. Ma'am, religion has got nothing to do with that, basically. These are the terrorists. They have got no religion. No, just They listen. are doing in the name of the religion, actually. You're right. So in the name of religion, <coughs> when you bring all your ulamas, who these people also follow, and they condemn, they condemn, they call it pegham e pakistan I don't know if you've heard of it or not. pegham e pakistan is a very important narrative in which all these leaders, scholars, have condemned uh, terrorism, extremism, and uh, violent extremism. So this is a very positive development. Now, today is International Women's Day. And I think, being a woman, I would also call on our women to be watchful of their sons, of their brothers. And if they note that there is an activity going on which is not normal, to be able to uh, nip the trouble in the bud. Because we, the women of Pakistan, we are 51%. We also have to play our role in counter-terrorism. So I would look at this issue at international level, at regional level, and then at domestic level. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, that is an interesting part, but ma'am, uh, again, I'll a quick comment before I uh, go to Hamid Khan Saab. Now, when it comes to terrorism, uh, generally anybody wearing a turban, having a beard, uh, who looks like a Pashtun, uh, will be considered a T for terrorist, like T for tomato. This narrative is a Western narrative, ma'am, and West has always set narratives. These are the ones who create these narratives and then the rest of the world follows it, ma'am. Now, this is not the reality that every Muslim is a terrorist. As we uh, all remember that there were so many movies, my name is Khan, but I'm not a terrorist. Mm -hmm. So the point is, ma'am, don't you think this has to have a counter narrative now? High time exactly, for that. Exactly, that's what I'm talking about. Pegham e Pakistan is a counter but, narrative. But wasn't that effective? No, it is being implemented now. First was the drafting and then it is being implemented in different uh, sectors. It is for the youth, it is for the women, it's for the men, it is for minorities, it is interfaith harmony, it is everything, it's multidimensional. So first was drafting of the narrative, and now we are in the phase two of implementation of the narrative. And you believe that after the implementation, things would get a lot better? Inshallah, why not? All right, so your quick comment in the name my, my only concern is, she's very right in what she said, but not only the ulma and mashayikh, it has to be the vice chancellors of the universities, the school teachers, the parents, and the Women Action Forum, why not? Any, any uh, organized forum where people come and share ideas, it should be projected that our one point agenda is that we will not uh, tolerate this uh, sectarian rift amongst us. And we will eliminate this menace once for all. And of all the, uh, the all Pakistanis, all organizations, all uh, uh, institutions, make this resolve and make this commitment and work for it. Inshallah, this menace will go. The only things that we have to put our hearts and souls together behind this. There effort. has to be a very solid and concrete effort exactly. behind this, yes. basically. And in Pahami, Pakistan, they are doing that. It is academia. It is intelligentsia. It is artists. It is scholars. It is Ulamas, but we had to start with ulama because, like you said, the terrorists use uh, religious ideology to justify their act. So the first action had to be from them and politicians also. So we have taken all segments of the society and put them together to make this narrative. So you're right that there was a narrative in the West, and now we had to put counter narrative, a counter narrative to terrorists. And I think we all, I mean, it's not just being on forums. It's every Pakistani, every citizen. We have to stand together 
like a wall against this evil. All right. Now, coming to you, Hamid Khan Saab, National Action Plan. I mean, what a beautiful three-word exactly. uh, ide idea, I would say, sir. It had 20 points. Many were implemented. Here, Many yeah. were not. Now, the point is, sir, again, the word Islamophobia, Islamic State, Daesh. I mean, Islam seems to be the religion that is being targeted by a certain philosophy, sir. D divisions are created within uh, the Muslims, Shias, Sunni, uh, then uh, this very, very tragic incident uh, of Friday uh, where we lost 63 precious lives. That was a Shia mosque. Though I should not be calling it a Shia mosque, it mosque is a mosque, but what I'm saying is this. Again, just to make sure uh, that uh, there should be a violence amongst these uh, divisions. Hazaras are being targeted in Balochistan. People were taken off from buses and their ID cards were checked. And then whosoever was a Shia was shot while they were on their uh, way to Gilgit, Baltistan. So, or perhaps one of my very dear colleague and a friend uh, who became a father about a week ago, I'm, I'm talking about this is about 10 years ago, so he, he became a father then, uh, about a week ago, then he went uh, to, to see his son and on the way, uh, while he was on his way to Parachinar, the van was stopped and this young, good-looking uh, boy was killed. I still remember that, I can't even digest it. So this is how they do it. So do you think, um, as suggested by uh, a Commodore Saab and uh, Ambassador Saiba, that uh, you know, uh, this pegham -e pakistan ideology is a counter-narrative, it is going to sort this issue out, or perhaps a counter-narrative is going to be of some weightage and value. If not, what else? Uh, <coughs> Thank you very much, uh, Faisal. I, I, I really appreciate what you said all the way. Uh, I, with an apology, I would disagree with Ma'am Naila uh, in terms of that this pegham -e pakistan will be the only thing to resolve it. It is a very good uh, effort from the government of Pakistan, but it can only be taken as a parallel effort to, uh, to counter terrorism, but it is not an uh, immediate remedy. It will not resolve our issue. As you said, that we have seen the recent wave of terrorism which is going to uh, put everything down the drain, what we achieved after giving 80,000 lives. And we achieved a peace with the 10,000 uh, soldiers and the security personnel gave their lives. 70,000 people, uh, civilians gave their lives. We, we managed to achieve the peace. And now, because of so many factors, now this, uh, our foreign factors, our enemies are trying to sabotage all the efforts which we, uh, we did in the last 20 years. This is the time when uh, our security forces, our security paradigm has to redesign a kind of NAP again, immediately to reinforce it to be able to stop any further uh, terror attacks, to stop any further damages. As you mentioned, what ha happened two weeks ago in Balochistan, what happened in Peshawar, it is all a planned second or, or a new wave of terrorism for, to, to bring in stability in Pakistan. And this is something which Pakistan in current situation cannot afford it. Yes, there is a price which Pakistan is paying for it, and that is a price that the way U.S. has to go out from uh, Afghanistan, the humiliation which United States faced, uh, then the Pakistan's, uh, 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 you know, foreign policy shift towards China and other things. Then Pakistan saying from uh, from do more to absolutely not then from pakistan's government officially condemning the european union's letter that why we are not supporting uh, europe on the matter of ukraine so we have to see that what pakistan's government and but pakistan's policy change is uh, always related to the internal and external situation with pakistan this is the time when Pakistan is, uh, you know, all the think tanks and the policy makers, they have to redesign our security, uh, I should say, the doctrine, especially to how to encounter it. And if you look into the in, uh, deep analysis of it, yes, there is a need of, uh, of a counter narrative. But before that counter narrative, there is a need of eliminating all the 
all the factors which are working for the others, which are whether it is an Indian proxy, whether it is funded by uh, Americans, whether it is the people who left uh, in the name of Daesh by America from C-130s, they all are targeting only one uh, nation at the moment, and that is Pakistan, because they believe that the weakened Pakistan is in favor of America, a weakening Pakistan is in favor of Europe and India. This is the this is the entire situation which we need to analyze, and there is only uh, immediate uh, action is that Pakistan has to re uh, I should say that revisit the whole uh, security design, and Pakistan nation has to stand together like we were always for the last 20 years. We did suffer, and we had so many reports of Pentagon when they were saying that Pakistan is going to divide in, in 2008 in maybe four countries. Then they said Pakistan is going to divide into four countries or five countries in 2014. So this is what world was expecting from Pakistan. But with the help of Allah and with, the, with our national strength, with our nation unity, we are managed to survive from all, all those terrorist uh, you know, years. Now this is this new wave. Yes, Pegame Pakistan will be an effective thing, but it is a parallel thing which we can do it for the future and to repair our social fabric. It is a very much required. There is no doubt for it. But we have to identify our enemies. We have to work against them. We have to uh, openly tell the world that now we are not going to put anything under the carpet. We're going to tell them that who's our enemy, whether it is India, whether it is sleeping cells in Afghanistan. If Taliban cannot control them, Pakistan has to ask them that let Pakistan control them one way or the other, because Pakistan cannot afford any more uh, heavy, you know, this kind of Peshawar or Balochistan kind of terror attacks in Pakistan. Pakistan have to give them a befitting reply to all the enemies of Pakistan, despite of any uh, diplomatic efforts. So, this word is pretty common, resilient. Mm -hmm. And I hate to hear resilient nation. Pakistan is a resilient nation. Do we have a choice? Mm -hmm. Because the one who is dying doesn't know why he's being killed. The one who is killing doesn't even know why, why is he coming in a mosque and blowing himself because is he going to get to j Jannat or what? Mm -hmm. Heavens are not meant for, <laughs> for individuals like those. It is a different ballgame, a different story. So there is an ideology uh, that's being fed into these youngsters from a very, from a very, from the very beginning, I would say, when they're eight, nine, ten years old in a madrasa, constant. Don't you sort of think that uh, instead of just, uh, you know, putting some sort of a lotion on, on the wound, we really need to dig deep and find the root cause and address that, actually. Because, sir, I hate to hear when politicians condemn, oh, oh, and then there are certain typical words and sentences used by them ever since Pakistan came into being, ever since this terrorism started. They would tweet that, and even they won't even know. Their uh, staff officers would just, you know, issue that, because this is what they're supposed to say. So this is not acceptable anymore. Uh, Faisal, uh, if you Peshawar, you're so this is the, the first, I think, the last major, major uh, terrorist attack was in the Army OPS, Public School, sir. OPS. And after that, this is the second biggest attack, sir. That's right. I said, I think, uh, let me say that uh, because we started with the Security Council uh, resolution which came out, the world is suffering from a duplicity. Because uh, at one hand, this council was preparing this sort of letter of appreciation for us, where efforts at countering terrorism were recognized and eulogized. We become euphoric too quickly. We think that we have got a very positive vibe from the uh, world top uh, body. But at the same time, we were sort of uh, held back on FATF, where we thought that we have met all the um, uh, <coughs> conditionalities. It has become a political issue That's now. right. So they're, yeah. they're actually, they have caught us by throat and they're not exactly. uh, leaving it because they know that still they have their own eggs to grind and we are pro 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 providing them the honing stone for that. So unless world comes out of this duplicity and we come out of this state of uh, becoming euphoric on every green signal that we see from the West, we, things will not change. And look at it. They, they, they uh, held us back on FATF. 
they stayed such a strong uh, <coughs> rebuke against Pakistan mm -hmm. for what offense for being neutral in a dispute which in which we had no part to play neither for Russians nor for the Americans so like Americans they have got to use to uh, be they are not us. used to listening to this word no more that's right absolutely not how could they digest that that's right. So, <laughs> to my <laughs> mind, is, is that the problem? That's right. Uh, my mind, my my own analysis. You may call me a pessimist, but here, this resolution <coughs> to me Sorry. is just a piece of paper. It's just few lines. I want to see concrete actions from SO the world powers. SOP, basically. That yes. is it. You know, on one resolution, they can mm. move uh, 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 divisions and uh, I mean all sorts of lethal weapons to any part of the world. But what we have received, just this piece of paper, is it enough? Uh, reward for us. But sir, if you remember, the the Americans gave us some helicopters to for the surveillance purpose on the border, mm -hmm. Pakistan, Iran, and Pakistan and Afghanistan. They took it, took them back. Correct. Sure. They were supposed to give us some F-16s primarily to counter the terrorism and to hit the hideouts. They never gave us those. They charged the money. Remember, and they wanted to give us wheat instead. <laughs> so, this is the duplicity. This is the problem. Because there is no will, they don't want that. If America wanted it, so they created it. That's right. Simple as that. This Raymond exactly. Davis concept, I think it's a concept, it's not an individual. True. It's everywhere, these contractors. So, unless <coughs> the world powers, <coughs> the movers and shakers of the world events, they come out of this duplicity. The world is not going to change. This is not a utopia. This is their, unless they get rid of their dystopian concepts. The world will not change. And this is a very categorical proof that this country to whom they are appreciating through this resolution, they kept us in fat chains. They passed such a strong resolution against us for being neutral on the Ukraine dispute. Uh, so unless this thing change, I don't think. Yes, that is the world in which we are living and we have to chart our own course of action. And I think our only course of action is to create a consensus among ourselves to build that unity, to get rid of these all these divides which have been actually putting one, one of us against the other. Unless we do that, nobody will come to our rescue. These re resolutions are mere pieces of paper. They will not help us. Even in the case of Ukraine, sir, yeah. they've hardly done anything. And so, it's so the kind of course that uh, we've opted for, the, co <laughs> uh, the, the, the approach or perhaps the, you know, uh, the, the future formula uh, as far as the foreign policy is concerned. Uh, Faisal, very interesting. I could talk at length on this. Because <coughs> when Prime Minister uh, went to uh, US, uh, uh, Russia, it was, I think, in line with our, uh, it was a very good direction that our foreign policy was taking. Because for ages following, uh, towing uh, American line, we were actually now moving to a divergent path, slightly deviant path, and we were trying to sort of looking forward for a more independent and more pluralistic foreign policy, like one always at the back of call of being the Western powers. So I was very happy as an individual because I could see that this, this was like a breath of, uh, breath of uh, fresh air for me. But that was only very good till uh, Mr. Putin has not uh, uh, started uh, uh, moving into Ukraine because his stance was correct. You are bringing all President the NATO Putin countries. Was left with no other choice. No sir. choice. But the moment he uh, walked into a sort of uh, his forces uh, entered Ukraine, that all that dynamics changed. Because now it is very difficult to sort of, uh, I mean, this is the same situation as America wanted, uh, walked into uh, Afghanistan one day, 20 years back. So we all condemned them. Um, I mean, those who are uh, thinking that they, otherwise we supported them. But also. Pakistan as a country? Yes, so we never condemned so it, sir. We it became is, a part of them. So it is, it is the same thing because non Russia, NATO ally, uh, exactly. just like we got all Qatar has become a non NATO ally. Yes, yes, we are granted all those <laughs> Garland and Sobriques, and we very uh, gladly received them. But we lost eighty thousand people uh, as a reward of that. Our, and uh, look at what happened efforts. to our economy. So now that our foreign policy is trying to take a uh, uh, change of direction, and we are hopeful that it materializes. <coughs> but I think the only course, logical course open for Pakistan at the moment was neutrality. Because now we don't want to add... So we I opted think, for the right course of action. That's right, because I think this is very rightly said. 
that we are ready to work with anybody in peace but we are not ready to work uh, we will not any become a part of oh yeah so this is a very mm. good bold policy statement and i i i am all for it it's good policy initiative i hope it materializes and it progresses further all in right. future now first of all i would like you to <coughs> respond to what hamid khan sir said that this is not enough so if pegham e pakistan is not enough ma'am uh, because if you remember the 20 point agenda as far as national action plan is concerned ma'am uh, Th th that was a very comprehensive one, but ma'am, when it comes to the implementation part, that is where the problem is. You can uh, uh, put a check on any uh, organization, whether it is in Saudi Arabia or UAE, to stop funding a certain X Y Z uh, individual or again an NGO in Pakistan. But you can't stop any particular individual, maybe who is sitting in the United States of America. Remember, they said that no more chanda collection, ma'am. That's still going on. Uh, they said, well, uh, as far as the sermons, especially during the Friday prayers, they're concerned, it has to have some sort of a uniformity. That doesn't exist. Every Malvi has his own 12-inch you know, or 13-inch long tongue, and let me be very straight, and they would say whatever they wish to. No check and balance regarding that. Because I think, ma'am, Malvi, especially the one in the villages, that Malvi is the most powerful man. And every third person has become a mufti. He can issue a fatwa on anybody and anybody. Religion is used as a sword to put a check on anybody who disagrees with you. Don't you think, ma'am, this should be the counter narrative? But, Politics uh, should be kept aside. Religion should be kept aside. That's how the West grew. That is true. But coming but to nobody the dares point, to do that. Uh, no, the point that Mr. Hamid made. He perhaps didn't understand what I was saying. I didn't say this is the only way to go. I said this is this is a very important umbrella to have, because, like you were saying, Faisal, that terrorists are using religion as a pretext for their violent activity. Now, to nullify their narrative, you had to bring all the ulamas and the scholars and academia on the same platform including parliamentarians because you know a lot of politicians have links here and there also so bringing them all over and making pegham e pakistan is an umbrella which was very important that never happened before so let's not berate it i think it's a very important step because that itself counters the narrative of the terrorists who used to recruit young boys like was said earlier poor boys unemployed boys frustrated with life giving them options making them believe that you know your janna is by blowing yourself up all that nonsense had to be rectified by creating a narrative and we now have to support it we have to now implement it and we should not just underrate it oh this is okay no this is a very important step and this we have to agree on and implement to be able to become effective in countering the narrative of the terrorists, number one. Number two, this isn't the only step, like you were talking about na national action plan. That is also very important and uh, pegham -e pakistan is supplementing national action plan. It is not counter or against the national action plan. It's so we are reinforcing, it. exactly, we are reinforcing the national action plan through this but uh, our society has become very complex it is not very simple any longer not that it was simpler before so many divisions exactly so we have to stand together and now 23rd march is coming or uh, you know it's our national day we have to do a lot of introspection this is a great a moment for us to think we have spent more than seven decades as an independent sovereign state where are we going wrong we can blame the whole world for everything that I goes mean, wrong management they say if you know your problem half your problem is solved exactly Faisal so we have to do introspection do we actually know our problem or we, we have, to. have closed our eyes we can't or afford we to. Want to know we can't afford to we can't have an ostrich approach any longer we have to open up our eyes and we have to use these positive developments to create positivity in the society. 
there is so much of negativity, there is so much of demoralization, there is so much of depression that we have to create positive and uh, you know effective methods to bring everybody on board. I hope, I hope this happens. Man. Last comment, Hamid Khan sahab. Hamid sahab, <coughs> people say that uh, you know war itself is a problem. It's not a solution for any problem. Everything has a political uh, solution, you know, that, that, that needs to be taken into account. Uh, all the politicians should sit, but sir, unfortunately the kind of characters we have in so many parties, now the problem is that uh, they have their own individual agenda and individual interest as compared exactly. to the mindset where there should be a national agenda, national interest that should be kept first, that is missing. 23rd March, look what the opposition is up to. Sir, I'm not going to get into that because then they'll put a you know blame on me that you know I, I've become a party with PTI. I, I will never vote in my life, I've decided not to waste time. The problem is, the problem is that uh, at the end of the day, sir, if everything has to have a political solution, obviously we're looking at these politicians. So the problem is that uh, if they're personal interest has a total contradiction with the national interest, what should we expect exactly. from them? Uh, Faisal, uh, absolutely right. You know, it is not about, it is not about the, it is not about anything, it is about the hypocrisy. Unfortunately, as a nation, as so many political parties, if you look into their you know, stance, and if you look into their practicality, and if you look into their uh, statements, it is it is always hypocritic. They do not match with each other. But if we talk about, I mean, as uh, Basisa was talking and Ma'am Naila was talking, I, am, I fully agree that there is no doubt uh, about, uh, you know, efforts to uh, to address the issues what our as to for our national unity there is no doubt but on the other hand just for two lines i would like to say that there is we should not be very happy with this united nations uh, unsc the statement because i i can feel there is something in between lines which we will we will face in coming days because as uh, as we know that we are the one who are always suffering and we are the one who've been forced to do so many things and we are the one who have paid a heavy price whether it is economical whether it is giving the lives whether it is our social fabric i, I always keep saying it that our you know to, uh, pakistan uh, uh, prior to 2001 was different Pakistan. Then Pakistan prior to, to 70s was a diff 71 was a different Pakistan. So these are the phases which are sub our nation is suffering. Now there is a need of a national dialogue where it comes to united, uh, you know, give a unity to the nation. Yes, there is a need for it. At the same time, there is a very much need of working on all 20 points of national plan rather i would say that even there is a need of readdressing redesigning this national action plan including to see our foreign policy we have changed our foreign policy a lot and now national action plan has to be redesigned as well that where we have seen that the america is the one who has become a kind of a party against us in so many matters whether it was fatf whether it was f16 whether it was coalition support fund whether it was so many matters. So now Pakistan is in the stage where Pakistan has to redesign its foreign policy, its internal, uh, you know, political system. There has to be, uh, you know, all the political all right. parties has to be responsible for it. All right. Khan Saab, thank you very much uh, for your comments. My pleasure, pleasure having you, ma'am. Sir, totally out of time, but thank you very much uh, for your presence as well. And that's all we have uh, for this. Uh, I'll see you, inshallah, tomorrow at 8.05. PM till then you take good care. Good afternoon.